Greetings, I'm Solid Scully, and welcome back to Ratchet & Clank 3 Up Yours, Arsehole. And uh, now it's time to return to the Starship Phoenix, where it appears that Captain Quark has been given ill-fitting command over a special task force. Oh dear. But alas, we must leave Annihilation Nation, but fear not, because we'll be back. In all of its buzz quiz game glory. Have I actually, have I ever made a new version of that? Uh, the last time I ever remember seeing the Buzz quiz game thing was on the PS3, but... Uh, I guess it just kind of got left behind in the changeover to PlayStation 4 and now PS5. Well, that sucks. Ladies and gentlemen! Oh, and Helga. Welcome to the Q-Force! You have been assembled here because each of you is an expert in your particular field. From Al's mastery of electronics to Skid's nerves of steel hey! to Helga's sensual powers of seduction. Each of you has shown that you are worthy to wear the cue. Years ago, I single-handedly defeated Dr. Nefarious, but like a rash on the galaxy's backside, he has flared up again. Our first mission will be to infiltrate the Doctor's top secret base on planet Aquatos. Impossible, you say? Perhaps for a lesser strategist? Behold, my brilliant plan! First, Ratchet and Clank will descend to the sea floor and wade through a series of tunnels flooded with waist-high raw sewage. What? Please hold your questions until the end of the presentation. After infiltrating the base, our agents will split up. Clank will enter the base's ventilation system where he will locate and deploy this banana-guided autonomous monkey device. Or the GAMD. <laughs> Meanwhile, Ratchet will use his extensive knowledge of the Tyranoid language and customs to win the trust of the bloodthirsty alien guards. Finally, our agents will make their way to Nefarious's personal office, steal everything that isn't nailed down, and exfiltrate the base completely undetected. That's crazy! But it just might work. I wouldn't normally stay silent for that long, but to be perfectly honest, Quark's plans drawn in crayon and shit. Uh, I mean, even to this day, they still get a chuckle out of me. Not quite the belly gut lot busting laugh, but it's still funny. Incoming call. Oh no. Clank, Bubby, you're killing me! Excuse me? I'm trying to make a picture here, and Mr. Big Shot Star is nowhere to be found! I am currently occupied with a mission of galactic security. Right, right, I get it. You want a bigger trailer? Done. You want a daily oil massage? Done. I need my star on the set pronto, capiche? Uh, you're, uh, breaking up. You know, I can see you, weasel boy. Oh yeah? How about now? He'll figure something out. We've got work to do. So, uh, I mean, I guess the movie director guy probably had Clank's number, but even still, how the hell did he know where he is, or... I don't know, there's a, there's a lot to unpack with a lot of Clank's, like, filmography as an actor in, like, Secret Agent Clank or whatever, but we'll tackle that when we get to it. And again, as you might also be noticing, yeah, off screen, uh, got a change of armor, got to change the ship color. A lot to unpack with that in and of itself, but, uh, at least in terms of cut content, but yeah, much like Ratchet and Clank 2, you can upgrade your armor, and, uh, again, like, I mean, it is still in that very Spy Kids 3D looking vibe, but. Oh, we've got more cutscenes, so I'll save my thread until then. Just, uh, get a little peek in. Skid, what are you doing here? My code name is Shadow Dude, bro. Black Ops are my especiality. I figured you guys could use my help. Uh, thanks, Shadow Dude, but I think we've got this one covered. All right, I'll just take my hacker and go back to the ship. Hacker? Oh, well, you know, on second thought, I think we'd like you to join the mission, Shadow Dude. Awesome! This is gonna be sick! Radical Dude, I'm Skid McMarks, who is uh, somehow still around in the series to this day, despite uh, being a very dated, like, Surfer Dude parody. Like, I'm kind of surprised the more recent, like, 2016 reimagining used him, but... Yeah, who knows, really. Uh, but again, as I was saying beforehand, with uh, the armor upgrades, Again, like, they basically allow you to take less damage, as you'd expect, and look very, uh, well, of the era. 
And again, like in a similar uh, manner to what you found on uh, Planet Rilga, again, the robots are designed to attack bioorganic components, and of course, and of course, because Ratchet's organic, yeah, they're gonna be targeting his furry little ass, and uh, also skids. Well, actually, no, actually, because I believe in um, one of the developer commentaries, I think it might have been Mike Stout, actually. Yeah, he specifically designed the stage in mind with um, Skid not to be targeted because uh, he rightfully said that escort missions are bullshit. And I absolutely agree with him. So Skid is pretty much invincible. You can hit him, you can have enemies to sort of skirt around him. He won't take damage and quite honestly, thank fuck for that. Uh, Skid's only purpose really is to make you jealous that he has a gadget that you'll be getting later in the game. The, again, the elusive trespasser infiltrator electrolyzer minigame, which again, you'll be getting a look at in due time. I don't think it's around here actually, but I believe there's also a platinum bolt hidden under another one of these segments. Uh, yeah, I think it might be the next one actually. But again, Aquados is a bit of an interesting world actually. It has some pretty good music, especially what we'll be hearing towards uh, the end of the part. And also, it's kind of multi-layered actually. You get a lot of different uh, gameplay changes to keep it fresh. And again, being the lover of underwater levels that I am, I actually think it's a pretty cool level. It has a lot of uh, atmosphere to it. Again, it is admittedly one of the se one of the sorts of levels where you have segments that you can't actually go back to, uh, particularly once we infiltrate Nefarious's base, we'll never be able to see it again, sadly. On some more positive notes, however, again, if you activate all the TNT crates, you know, by just running into them while you're underwater, uh, yeah, you can actually get the uh, searching for sunken treasure skill point. So, uh, that's how you do that. And, uh, again, as you could probably tell with all the, uh, amoeboids. Arriba, amoeba! Yeah, there is a certain, uh, special thing you'll be doing here, especially with the King Amoeboids, which are giant globules of greedy chemicals, and they give you a sewer crystal, which, uh, is a mechanic I'll be explaining later. Or I could probably just explain right now. Don't really know why I'm saving that for later, but... Uh, should I save it for later? Nah, fuck it. Again, right down there is... I think you can probably just barely see it. Yeah, just over there. That's where you can see the, uh, Platinum Bolt, as is Russian Clank tradition. But anyway, in regards to the sewer crystals, uh, basically they're pretty much this game's equivalent to the desert and, like, ice crystals that you had in Ratchet and Clank 2. Again, like, you have this huge open sewer area where you can go around, hunt for King Amoeboids and sewer crystals that just grow naturally out of the pipes. And, uh, yeah, that's another way of getting a shitload of bolts very early on, so again, if you want to save up for some of those meteor weapons or uh, more powerful looking armors, that's your way to do it. I mean, then again, that does also come with a caveat that if you weren't really a big fan of those areas in Ratchet & Clank 2 to begin with, uh, then in Ratchet & Clank 3 it probably won't really hold much of anything for you, especially considering the fact that it's also kind of limited in the sense that up until you get the gravity boots, you won't really be able to have full uh, free access to the area, so... Uh, I don't know. I, I guess to some extent it might make it worth coming back once you get that upgrade, but at the same time, if you weren't really a fan of that to begin with, then... Uh, your loss, I guess. Uh, then again, uh, depending on how engaged you are with side content to begin with, it probably means that you won't be doing a lot of other this, a lot of the other extra shit that usually comes out of all this stuff. So, who knows? Maybe you could have instead died because you didn't know how to play video games, like a loser. Except I am the loser because I play video games instead of doing more important things with my life. Bribe, bribe. Yeah, but in any case, again, much in the same vein as Ratchet & Clank 2, again, you already have the oxygen mask, so you don't need to worry about air, you've got the hydro pack, which is uh, not even well, I, I don't even think a Ratchet & Clank 2 was selectable, it's just something that you automatically have, which is, uh, good. I'm trying to think, actually, was, uh, was the hydro pack in Ratchet 2016? I think it was, I've only, only ever played that game once, and, uh, whatever. I'm um, thinking too hard. And, uh, I suppose... Actually, when is Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart coming out? I mean, I'm not- I'm probably not gonna be able to play it this year, because I'm in, kind of, uh, financial straits right now, which, uh, doesn't really give me the ability to get a PS5, so I probably won't be getting it until 2022 at the earliest, but... Hmm... Yeah, I don't know, like, I mean, uh, Rift Apart actually does look pretty interesting if I could just pad out for time, like... Even though the multi-dimensional concept seems to be a bit of a running trend these days, I'm interested to see how it, you know, ties into the gameplay, and, uh, since you can seemingly jump between dimensions, so... Who knows, might be a fun game. Ah! Shh! Clank, did you hear that? 
we are not alone. Hey, uh, dudes, I uh, forgot to feed my goldfish. I'll see you back at the... Well, if it ain't two of my best customers. Slim Cognito? What are you doing down here? I had a small run-in with the cops concerning a suck cannon upgrade that was mistakenly sold to a miner. I swear the kid looked 18. Anyway, I needed to find a less conspicuous place to do business. I take it you two are still in the market? Well, let's see what you've got. Hey, it's Sim Cognito, and uh, also another nice benefit that you used to get with a lot of PS2 games. Yeah, again, if you have a Ratchet & Clank 2 save data because you have an employee discount with a Megacorp or something, yeah, you can actually get all those weapons free. And you know what? I am honest to God shocked that more games don't do this in recent years. Like, I mean, you think in the day and age where we have, like, you know, uh, hard drive saving and, like, you know, uh, buying games and all that kind of stuff, I don't know, you would have thought that, like, sharing data and giving fans, like, a reward would have been more commonplace. There's the ventilation shaft. We must split up here. Yeah. Well, I guess it's time to put on the Tira guys and go meet my new pals. Good luck. I will assist you if I can. <laughs> Perhaps you should have read the instruction manual. <laughs> it was nice knowing you, Ratchet. <laughs> Oh, Tihi, Ratchet let out a big fart. Oh, what a smelly bitch. Uh, but yeah. Actually, um, fun fact, actually, since this game does also have subtitles, which you can select in the options menu, yeah, you can actually ha hear Ratchet's on, uh, you know, translated thoughts in the Tira guys. So, like, I, mean, I think in that cutscene before, he just said, son of a quark. No monkey uh, I don't know. Interesting detail, actually, and also a bit of an odd duck, actually, because Ratchet and Clank 2, if I remember correctly, I don't think actually has subtitles, which was... Such an odd and rather glaring omission. Like, I mean, you would have thought that the game would have had subtitles since Ratchet and Clank 1 had them, but I guess not. Uh, but whatever, now we also have Clank's gameplay. It's pretty much on change from what it was in Ratchet and Clank 2 and, uh, well, the previous game, really. At least from the basic outset. You no longer have the vast amount of uh, micro bots, so no, you don't have any lifter bots, you don't have any uh, hammer bots or whatever else, or bridge bots or anything. Which actually really would have come in useful right here because we need to extend the bridge. But instead, what we have in place is the regular gadget bots, you know, that can attack, uh, wait, follow you, and uh, enter into a little gadget bot port, and of course, scrunch the monkey to be s to discuss at a later date. But now we have the Tira guys. Uh, basically, what this is meant to be is well, I believe it was initially inspired by Space Channel Five. Uh, for anybody who's ever played that game on the Dreamcast, but. Yeah, it's basically like a sort of rhythm kind of thing, where you basically match up the button prompts, and, uh... Yeah, right shot allows him to communicate with other things. And again, it's actually really hilarious if you fuck these up, because he comes out with some utterly bizarre quotes like, Orange, butterscotch, zoom zoom! Or something like- something basically like, um, Go like a fungus toad, you piece of shit, or I fucked your sister. I don't know, it, it's really hilarious. If you ever get your hands on Ratchet and Clank 3, fail some of these prompts. You don't get penalized for it, like you don't um, automatically die or anything, but... I don't know, it's pretty funny, and like, some of the messages, even when you do succeed, are pretty, uh, amusing. Again, it's also kind of weird, because like, from what I can gather, I guess the Turanoid language is also very visual, since they, you know, pet their stomach and like, uh, burp and just do whatever else. I don't know, like, I mean, we don't get to learn much about the Turanoids, but their language is, uh, interesting. Uh, this is also one of my favorite exchanges in order to get him to... Uh, lift up the bridge, actually. Don't tell anyone I hid five bolts under the girder. Ha ha, sucker, it's mine now. Uh, like, man, I will say the game's comedy is still very hit or miss, but it does have a lot of gems in there, which, you know, is something that is a lot more than I can say for Ratchet and Clank 2. But anyway, to go back to the... <laughs> as you can probably hear with Scrunch's screams right there. Yeah, basically, one of the additions to Clank's gameplay was, uh, Scrunch. And again, basically, you shoot bananas using the uh, banana-guided autonomous monkey device. And basically, Scrunch will go wherever you throw him, he'll basically be used to distract searchlights and, uh, get himself hurt. And Scrunch was basically included for, uh, two reasons, if my handy-dandy tangents are to be believed. Uh, he was designed because Insomniac Games were actually struggling to find ways to really innovate Clank's gameplay. And, uh, the second reason was because they liked abusing the monkey, so, uh, yeah, no animals were harmed in the making of this game, my arse, Insomniac Games. 
you like to spank the monkey, you like to shoot the monkey, you like to shock the monkey. Monkey, monkey, whatever that Peter Gabriel song was about. Again, there's not really too heavy a puzzle elements involved in this sort of thing because, again, like you mean, you're just gonna stand on a switch, wait for the monkey to do some shit. But a bing, you do the thing, and I think it's also quite clear why. I'd say at least up until a crack in time, Clank's gameplay didn't really have any sort of major revolution to it, and even in that case, a lot of that was only made possible thanks to his uh, time manipulation pals. But again, we'll explain that if we ever get to a crack in my ass, or clock block as the game was initially called. God, Insomniac love torturing animals. The sick, sick fucks. And you're supposed to wait until you get the gadgetbots on there, but uh, do not be too hasty. Again, and uh, thankfully, unlike Ratchet and Clank 2, I never had any issues of having, like, uh, gadgetbots get loose or falling onto the floor in an area that they can't really reach. Because, like, I mean, that was the biggest, one of the biggest pain in my asses in the Ratchet and Clank 2, actually. Especially during the review, actually. I don't think I commented on it, but... Yeah, during one of the segments, actually, I ended up having one of the gadgetbots, like, fall into... Like, this unreachable area during the prison ship, so... Yeah, thankfully, Ratchet and Clank 3 has no areas like that, because that was, uh... Kinda kappa shit. Oh, but again, like, while these segments aren't really that hard, just, like, hold down and press the buttons where you need to, uh, some of the tyrannoids will be a little bit like, hmm, you're kinda suspicious, you little butthole. What, uh, what incentive do I have to let you through here? And basically, well, you just gotta go with these back and forth little conversations. Like, I believe here, it's like, um, he says I'm here to fix, like, the Hollow Vid and the Secret Agent Clank, uh, whatever the fuck, and they go, thank goodness, you can finally repair it. And I believe, um, I think it's like one of the later ones, actually, where he says, like, um, I'll give you, like, my Amoeboids Gone Wild thing. Actually, no, that was, uh, one right at the end of the game, actually, which is, uh, yeah, a bit pervy and, uh, ewy and yucky. Because, I mean, uh, I guess different alien slime fetishes exist in the future? Well, they're, well again, they probably exist here on Earth, but... Yeah, that ain't, uh, that ain't exactly, uh, good. But in any case, we are finally done with this segment, and now we can see who's behind all of this. <laughs> well, what took you so long? Clank, uh, what are you doing here? You're supposed to meet me on the surface. I thought I would help. Well, you can give me a hand searching Dr. Nefarious's office. Hmm, well, let's see it. Oh, look at this. The complete Secret Agent Clank Holovid collection. <laughs> this guy's your biggest fan. That is rather disturbing. Disturbing. I have downloaded an encrypted star map. Perhaps Al can decode it. Great. Let's get back to the Phoenix. So that's pretty much it. And he has, pr and Doctor Nefarious has pretty much every single Secret Agent Clank DVD imaginable. So why are they all marked the same? Does he have like several box sets of the complete season? Oh. Uh, I actually really like this. is actually a really nice attention to detail. Like, I mean, it is loading up the next area, but. Again, like, it changes it up. It isn't like fucking Secret Agent Clank where they just have, like, the exact same fucking ship loading screen no matter where you are. By the way, this is one of my favorite themes in the game, but we won't be hearing it too much because, uh, we're gonna exit this area pretty soon, but again, this is the area where you go hunting for sewer crystals. As will be explained quite soon when we meet a returning familiar face. Hey, look, the plumber's back. Whoa! Deja vu! Ow! Oh, it's you two again. Right on schedule. This here's one of the nastiest, smelliest sewers in the galaxy. Most guys wouldn't set foot in a place like this, but me? Ah, I just can't get enough. Right. Well, we were just passing through. You can get back to... whatever you were doing. Hey, if you find any sewer crystals, I'll pay you for them in bolts. I'm making something special for the missus. Sewer crystals. Uh-huh. We'll keep that in mind. Ah, uh, the plumber. An always fan favorite to see return. And he was also voiced by the janitor from Scrubs. But, uh, sadly, he never came back for the future trilogy and beyond, but, uh, I guess that's neither here nor there in this case, so on that note, I'm Solid Scully, keep a new metal, and I'll see you next time for the Ratchet and Clank 3 Up Yours Asshole Commentary. Bye bye